Okay, this is a great viewpoint of the High Morns. Um, we're just on the edge of the Shimna Valley here and looking across the valley itself, on the right hand side, you've got Sleeve Mead Moor uh, with a very distinctive tower on the top of it. And that's one of our three uh, water commissioner's towers, which are linked together by the Morn Wall. Um, to the left of um, Meal Moor, you've got um, Sleeve Burna, very distinctive rocky tours on the top of that. Moving on round to Sleeve Comeda, uh, and up on the top of that, the second of our three towers, the second highest mountain in the Morns, and beyond that, uh, then you've got Sleeve Donard, the highest mountain, and the third of the three towers. And linking those all together is the Morn Wall, 22 miles in length, and um, totally right round the high Morns, um, up to about seven, eight feet in height, beautifully built uh, dry stone granite block wall, built to enclose the area that the Belfast Water Commissioners bought of the High Morns way back at the end of the 19th century. And really the idea being that every drop of water that falls within that wall ends up in the Silent Valley, ends up in the water supply uh, to Belfast and other areas as well. So the wall was built primarily to protect the purity of the water supply. Um, it took a long time to build, partly because First World War intervened. So they had started in the 1890s, early 1900s, uh, but it wasn't finished actually until 1922. But the towers themselves, they're not really necessary, really, they're called shelter towers. Um, who they were designed to shelter is, is sort of slightly odd because on, if you look at the outside of them, you'll see a trespassers prosecuted sign. So you have, to be a, you have to be a trespasser to actually go in and shelter within them. And obviously they were built at the very end of the wall building, so they weren't really there to shelter the men working on the wall because they were nearly the last things to be built. So they're slightly odd. I think they were really monuments, really. Uh, if you think about the sort of Victorian Edwardian era, they're all about building things of, of lasting uh, significance really of monuments and they're built in a sort of monumental style large grant blocks a very distinctive uh, style to them uh, and they're really about marking out um, the distinctiveness and the sort of the importance of the of the catchment area to the Belfast Water Commissioners. The towers are all slightly different um, the uh, the one on Donard uh, is actually got a flat top on it and now got the trig point the the Ordnance Survey measuring point where they put the theodolites on to carry out the trigonometrical surveys um, from but it doesn't have the pyramidal top on it, which the ones on Sleep Comeda and Sleep Me Moor have. They look more finished um, in a way because they've, they've got this really distinctive pyramidal top. It's it like something out of the pyramids in Egypt built on top of a, a very square stone tower. Uh, one on top of Sleep Comeda, in fact, it's not quite on the top of Sleep Comeda. The, the, the true summit of Sleep Comeda is marked by a cairn about 100 metres to the north of where the tower is. But that was the first one to be built. Um, and. Uh, it's, it's nearly the purest in terms of in, in terms of architectural uh, style. It's a very very neat pyramid, uh, and the wall runs right through it. So it's a very distinctive um, marker on the summit. So there are seats inside. I mean, they they were obviously designed for people to go in and, and shelter uh, within them. The Tower Mill Moor is, is quite similar um, to Comeda, except that it's at a very acute angle in the wall, so it looks different because the wall runs up either side of it, coming into each side of the door. But in fact, style-wise, it's very similar to Comeda. On the, on the tower on top of Meal Moor, there's um, uh, the initials of the men who built it. Robert Skillen, RS, is one of them. And the Skillens are still living here today. The Skillens in the valley below us um, here are still living in this valley and can look up and see, see the work uh, done by their great-grandfather, I think it is, on the top of Sleep Meal Moor. As far as we know, the, the towers had never been repaired since they were first built. The main worry was that if it, they hadn't um, been repaired now, that uh, very soon you would have had collapse of the stones. The stones were already displaced, they were starting to drop at the edges, so they were starting to lean out. So it was a matter of really addressing the problem before you got total collapse of the towers. The one on top of Sleep Comet was the one, strange enough, in the worst condition um, uh, before we started to work on this. The blocks had been effectively gradually separated by frost damage. So as the joints opened up slightly, water got in, snow and ice had got in, as the snow and ice um, expands, it started to push the blocks apart until it came point it came, they were starting to get unstable and the work had to happen to repair them. Uh, on Meal Moor, slightly different, the capstone had gone off Meal Moor uh, completely. We don't know where or how, maybe it was struck by lightning, maybe somebody took a souvenir at some stage, um, but the capstone was gone, so we had to get a new capstone made um, for Sleep Meal Moor. Um, but apart from that, it wasn't in as bad condition as the other two. Uh, on Sleep Donard, uh, the main work that had to be done that was the capping um, of the tower. Um, that had obviously been replaced in the 1950s when the trig point was, was put on top. Uh, and it effectively was a concrete um, uh, material over the top. And that had started to break down and crumble and, and come off. So we had to uh, repair that and replace that. And also fairly extensive repointing 
uh, of the of the stonework there as well. A few stones dislodged had to be put back into shape, uh, but mostly repointing to stop the water getting into those joints to stop the frost and snow action happening again in the future. Just beside the tower on, on St Donard is the Summit Cairn. It's believed to be probably Neolithic in origin, um, a passage grave uh, of some sort. Um, it's believed then that um, St Domingard, who, after which Donard is named, um, he had a monastic cell on the top and this is back in the 5th century. And more recently, of course, you've got um, uh, thousands of people climbing up on Donard for exercise, for views, for pleasure, for charity walks, for uh, challenges. Um, and, in, and the Summit Cairn is the centrepiece of that, and it, it together with the tower, uh, form this marvellous um, sort of dual um, sort of attraction to the, to the summit, really. I mean, the Mourne Wall is pretty well unique amongst you know, the mountains of Britain and Ireland. You don't get it, you something like this anywhere else. But it's a listed structure. It's now recognised as uh, of historic merit. And the towers are the most distinctive parts of that. So uh, to go up to any of the towers is you know, an experience in itself. Got, I suppose, a, a man-made object, built to a very high standard, built with great uh, care and um, with great workmanship, adding to the experience of being in the wild mountains.